November is just around the corner, and that means the 16th Annual National Podcast Post Month is fast approaching. Hi, I'm Jennifer Navarrete, founder of NAPPOD POMO, and I'm inviting you to join the 30-Day Global Podcasting Challenge. Whether you're a newbie looking to start your first podcast or a seasoned pro seeking inspiration, NAPPOD POMO is the perfect place to experiment and try new things. Visit NAPPODPOMO.org to learn more. See where podcasting can take you this November during National Podcast Post Month. I I never wrote. This all started with my wife's illness. When when she went into the hospital and I couldn't talk to her, I grabbed a pen and a paper and I started making notes. But and the reason was when we first met each other, we were in two different areas of the state. I would come up to her place on the weekends and leave. So we would send notes back and forth. So over the years, if I was to leave the house for something, go to work, make a trip to town, we would always leave a note on the kitchen table, you know, and it just came natural when I couldn't talk to her. I picked up a pen and I started writing and I, it was just notes, you know, a thought here, a thought there. And then over time it developed into what it is today which I always like to tell people that you know I don't see the value in it maybe as much but if somebody else likes it that I'm good with that that that's that's a good thing for me but I just want to you know now that I know that people are reading what I'm writing I try harder to make it sound right and to to let them see what what I'm seeing or what I'm feeling and to me that's that's the joy I get in it is if, if I can let them see by words what I'm feeling, then I count that as a win. And sometimes it's hard, you know, to, for me to to feel something. How, how can I take what I feel and put it into words that they'll also feel it, you know, or, or to show them what I'm seeing by just words. And when you get a comment back, like I could see that or I could feel that, that, that makes my day. So, you know, not only do Matt, maybe my writings help someone else, but they help me. And, and, and I like that, you know, it's, it's the way I can give back, then I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, that's my whole goal. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. I have a person on my screen that always brings me joy every time I get to speak to him. Um, he's been on many times to talk about his authorship, part of the Mission Hope series of books with our great friend Char Murphy, but as well Mike uh, has also been writing on his own and he's got uh, one book out, he's got the second book coming and uh, Mike, you also know him as ML Sutton, is here with me on the podcast. Uh, so gr- glad to have you back Mike again, glad to to be able to chat with you again. Welcome back. And yeah, Thank you, good afternoon. Enjoy. So we are... We've been talking rocks and cats and a bunch of stuff before we hit record, which is great because every time I get to talk to you, I learn something new about you. So, um, yeah, it's really, really good. So thank you again for being here. Um, For those who haven't met you yet, Mike, can you let them know where about you are in this world of ours? Yes. If you look at the, the United States on a map, and up in the right-hand side, you're going to see something that looks like a giant mitten with water all the way around it. I'm at the top of that mitten, just 20, 25 miles from the top of the mitten on the on the east side. So a beautiful area, beautiful area, beautiful climate. And not too far from us here in Canada, which is nice as well. And uh, you've been sharing stories about some of the places you've been around here in, in, in Canada, which is kind of unique as well. So tell me a little bit about your family, Mike, uh, you, your your children, stuff like that. Let us know about them yep. as well. Uh, well, my wife passed on three years ago, but the children are still here. And yeah. uh, my son is within 11 miles of me. My daughter's two miles. So nice. we, we often see each other and we're always sharing back and forth. And it's it's fun. You know, we, we still do things as a family. And... A lot of it is spur of the moment. I mean, someone gets an idea and it's like, yep, let's go. Let's go. We're, we're all ready to go. We all like to see things. So it makes it nice, but it's, it's nice having them nearby as well. You know, um, they help me, but I try to help them as well. 
and it, it balances it up and it, it, it helps us all. And so your first book, Mike, uh, was like To Lose a Soulmate, I believe. That was your first book. You yes. Yep. And that's all around uh, the loss of your beautiful partner in life and your uh, your confidant, every, everything. Uh, you lost her, which has to be life-changing. I can't imagine my wife and I are coming up on 30 years of marriage This in October. I can't imagine not having her around and not being able to tell her tell her about my day and just... You know, just she's my default. I just yeah. everything I just kind of I just kind of wait and tell her because she's she's what I want to talk to. She's who I want to spend the most time with. Like I can't imagine not having that piece of me. Yeah, and this anymore. This past August would have been forty six years had she still been here. We had forty three together before she passed, and it it is a it's hard. It was hard for me. It's hard for everybody. I mean, it's not like. I'm any, anybody special or out of the circle. Yeah. And the first book, what I dealt with was what it felt like waiting for that moment to happen when you know it's coming. And then when it happens, what do you do with your life afterwards? And so now, three years later, I'm looking at life as we all know that a given in life is we're going to deal with strife and pain, heartache. We maybe don't know when but we don't have to stay down either. You know, you get knocked down. I, I, I never want to think of myself as down and out. I'm not a quitter. So it, it's just natural for me to want to fight back, to get up and keep kicking. And I think that a lot of times when something like that happens, you have a hard time and it, and it takes a while. It's, it's not like you get over it within a month, even a year. Just now at three years and six months, I'm actually starting to, feel like I'm getting a handle on life again. You know, you you have your memories and you deal with things as they come up, but it's a good feeling to get up and see the sunshine, to play with my wife's cat, to work in the flower beds, to travel and sightsee again. And I and I can do that and still deal with the memories on the side. They're they're not my primary focus anymore. My focus now is I've got two kids and I got a whole world in front of me. And I've got a lot of people out there I haven't met yet. And maybe a lot of them I can help some way. And and that's that's where I want to aim myself. You know, it's yes. uh, it makes life living fun. You know, it's I, I enjoy that. Yeah. And the one thing I love is I love watching your posts on social media. You you have these amazing photos you share with us, but then you bring a story or you bring a thought out and it just consistently shows up on my feed i'm like oh there he is again uh and i just go through these and you just make me think all the time and that's the one thing that i love is when i can find somebody who makes me look inward makes me look at life differently makes me think that's that's probably one of the, the people that i need in my life is someone like you that it just keeps just keeps showing up and bringing more and more to for me to contemplate. I love that. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And and I, I, I send out a big thank you to all those photographers. They give me all, all those great pictures. <laughs> There's some, some fantastic photos out there and I never know. I don't set on social media all day. I try to hit it the very first thing in the morning and then I'm out and I work all day. And then some, some nights I don't get back in till eight thirty nine 9 o'clock Friday night. I finished up at nine 30. As soon as I get in get cleaned up, I sat down and I, put out my good night, but I never know what I'm going to say or do until I sit down. And I think it's, I, I look at it as it must be a God thing. Maybe somebody out there needs something at a particular time. And I have no clue, yeah. but, yeah. but after I've sat down, all of a sudden a thought will click in my mind and I start looking through my pictures and it's like, this picture will go with this thought and it makes sense. And that's, that's how I post them. So I, I don't, I don't have a plan. I don't have a schedule. It's, it's what comes in the moment. <laughs> you don't have a team of 20 working behind the scenes to write for you and <laughs> I, nothing. No, 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 I, yeah. I have one tabby cat and flex my lap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. So, yeah, no, thank you for making those, Mike, because, again, my wife and I love to read through those. And there's just so much heart that comes out through your words on social media. And I know. But I guess that's maybe one thing that authors can do more of is is to be willing to share on a place like social media, like the way you're doing, because you're you're still writing all the time. 
you're still working through your thoughts, right. taking something that happened that day or that week, and you're kind of documenting a lot of your your thoughts as you go daily. And, and over time, you're building a library of content. That, yep, exactly. That, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, and there, there are like, I've met a lot of really good people. I couldn't point them out in a crowd because I have no idea what they look like unless they have a picture of themselves on Facebook or one of these other sites. But I know that in these, there's there's writer sites, um, Writers Cafe, Dirt Road Storytellers, uh, Biz Catalyst. They're all writers, every one of them, and and they all in their own right have their topics that they like to write about or their thoughts and they, they follow a continual process where I might be all over the board, but I kind of like it like that. It's like you say, I, if, if I had a, a moment today that really struck me, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to write about because I want to share it if it's something good. So it's, somebody else will enjoy it. You know, to me, that's, that's what helps make my day and gets me through my day. So I, I enjoy that. And that's the one thing I love is the power of a story because there's someone out there that has a similar story or can relate to your story to some degree. And when they read it, they're like, it's like, it's like he's talking to me. It's like he knows me and he's speaking directly to me. And I can, I can kind of, I can picture myself in your words. And that's, that's what, that's what I love about stories. And that's why I think as authors, the more and more and more, authors we can share more through our words and through our stories than and impact people that like you said that might not even know you if they saw you on the street but they there's something about your words that just brings comfort or brings healing just a sense that there's someone else out there that I'm not alone in this big world exactly and it's a way for for many people that cannot get out of the house anymore you know you, we don't think about them yeah. But you know they're there, and if they have access to a cell phone or a laptop or an iPad, they they can follow life along through all of the poet and writer's stories. And like I have one one good friend that he, he quite often he'll put great ink or beautiful ink. That'll be his comment, and it's like you know when when you see that, you know you've got it right. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it I enjoy watching. I not only enjoy the writing of it, but for me, the biggest part is when I go back and read the comments. Yeah. I try to catch a few of them in the morning before I take off for work. But when I come in at night, oftentimes I'm really late putting it on there because I get reading the comments and the time flies by. But, yeah. but the comments is for me is, is the big thing. You know, did, awesome. did, did you reach somebody today? You know, yeah, it's great. I love it. Um, so there's a new book coming out and I'm excited to talk about that as well. Mike. Um, before we jump into that, like years and years and years ago, were you known for your writing and for doing all of this, or is this relatively new for you? I I never wrote. This all started with my wife's illness. Yeah. When when she went into the hospital and I couldn't talk to her, I grabbed a pen and a paper and I started making notes. But And the reason was when we first met each other, we were in two different areas of the state. I would come up to her place on the weekends and leave. So we would send notes back and forth. So midweek, I could I, I always talk to her on Wednesday on the phone. But in between Mon Sunday and Wednesday and Wednesday and Friday, we, we sent notes back and forth. So over the years, if I was to leave the house for something, go to work, make a trip to town, we would always leave a note on the kitchen table, you know. And it just came natural when I couldn't talk to her. I picked up a pen and I started writing. And I it was just notes. You know, a thought here, a thought there. And then over time, it developed into what it is today, which I always like to tell people that, it, you know, I don't see the value in it maybe as much. But if somebody else likes it, that I'm good with that. That That's, that's a good thing for me. But I just want to, you know, now that I know that people are reading what I'm writing, I try harder to make it sound right and to, to let them see what, what I'm seeing or what I'm feeling. And to me, that's that's the joy I get in it is if, if I can let them see by words what I'm feeling, then I count that as a win. And sometimes it's hard, you know, to, for me to, to feel something, how, how can I take what I feel and put it into words that they'll also feel it, 
you know, yeah. or or to show them what I'm seeing by just words. And when you get a comment back, like I could see that or I could feel that, that that makes my day. So, you know, not only do my, maybe my writings help someone else, but they help me. And, and and I like that, you know, it's, it's the way I can give back. Then I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, that's my whole goal. It's like you've been given a platform with all the things you've been through in the last three years. You've kind of been given the, the opportunity to speak and share from a place for, for many people, a place of hurt and loss and uh, fear. You are bringing a different side of you. A different message through all of this is that kind of the intent yeah yeah and i, th I think what it, what it is is when i was talking earlier about we all know that at some point in life we're all gonna we're all gonna have a setback we're all gonna feel pain yeah. and yeah there's a lot of little ones but every now and then there's gonna be a great one and i think when we have that great one and we have the option of either be feeling self-pity and wallowing in it or getting up and kicking and fighting back we can't we can't win it on our own but i've come to realize that with god i can win it it, it might be a constant battle but i'm not losing I'm, I'm still battling and if i'm battling that means i'm not laying down i'm taking it and i'm giving it right back and i think that god he doesn't have us he doesn't give us these hard times on purpose you know but I think he uses them to get us to a point where we're vulnerable. And when we're vulnerable, then we can hear him. If we're not vulnerable, and I, I was telling someone the other day, it's like this just hit me like like a someone reaching out and slapping me. I never realized the fact that until we're vulnerable, we don't listen to anybody. We don't hear anybody. We're, we're doing our own thing. We're going our own way, and we're going 100 miles an hour. But that moment that we're stopped in our tracks and we're made vulnerable, then we can hear God. And if we if we listen, I think that's when we start coming out of it. And that's where I think all my writing this came from. Because God didn't leave me alone when I lost my wife. He gave me the gift to share with so many other people and, and know that they're out there. You know, I, I get their comments. That's like them talking right to me. You know, yeah. so my wife doesn't talk to me, but all these other people all around the world are talking and I count them as friends, you know, they're, but it's, it's a piece of me that I never seen before. That's like I said, in the first book, it's like God opened up the windows of my heart where before I never paid any, never mind. My only regret was it didn't happen sooner. So I could have shared it, you know, with my wife, that would have been ideal. Knowing, knowing her the way you do, what, what would she think of all this? Like the writings, the social media posts, the uh, being on podcasts to talk yeah. about your books, and being a part of Shar's books. And she, what would she, what would she have thought of this? She'd have been amazed, but I think she'd been, <laughs> she'd have been tickled. If she, she never, yeah. she was not one to ever back off from anything. We, yeah. we all knew if, if you wanted to get something done, tell her she couldn't do it. She'd do it. Now, I've seen her replace the entire entrance door of a house because she had something that had to get in. And the only way to get in was to take that door down. She did it. <laughs> so, you know, she and she knew the same with me that together we could do whatever we wanted. You know, we, we were a, a good team that way. So I think she'd have been she'd have been happy and tickled. But I think she'd have felt it in her heart as well. You know, so the new book has some interesting additions to it which we'll get into um because uh you didn't just write this on your own which is quite unique i want to talk about that a little bit talk about the title of the new book um a little bit more and maybe how you settled on the title and what uh, readers are going to find in the new book that's coming out uh the title of the new book is an anthology from the heart for him for her for them so for him is God, for her is my wife, and for them is my children. And the, the book came about is I invite readers to join me as I walk back through when I open that front cover of the book. As I came through this last three and a half years, I continually wrote. I got peace in writing. You can read 
and see it in each writing, the healing that's taken place to get me where I am today. They're, they're in alphabetical order, so you're not going to have one, you know, you're not going to open up the book and say, oh, man, this is a downer and have 50 poems or writings that are, are all down. Because being in alphabetical order, it's mixed up. This one might be kind of a sad day. This one might be a happy day, you know. This one could be exciting. And, and it's back and forth. But I look at it like maybe a book you have on a coffee table. And you, you would want to sit and read through the whole book at one time. But maybe open it up and read a couple today. Put it down. Pick it up tomorrow. Read a couple more. I've read through it a few times front to back nonstop. And it is, it's a good read yet for me. But the idea is that by people looking at this book, they can see they're not alone in their struggles and that we, we can know that we can come out of our struggles. You know, we can heal. And, and that's where I, I want with this book is I want them to feel the healing as they read through this book and know that, yeah, this was a bad period, but three and a half years later, it's a great period. You know, I still have memories and I deal with that as they come. But each day to get up and see the sunrise, hear the birds, it's a beautiful world in front of me with a whole lot of people I have never met that I've still got to meet. And if I can help one or two on my way, then that just makes my world better. We talk about what your wife would think of all this, but there's a there's a nice surprise included in your book where we get to hear from your wife as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? There is. Uh, after she had passed away, and like like many families, months down the road, as I started putting things away and getting life, trying to put life back together, I came across the journal where she had put some writings in it. So I found six of them scattered through this book. Some of them were on sticky notes, just laying in there. So I've included them in this book. So anybody that's reading this book is not only going to hear my side of it, but you're going to see or and be able to read what her thoughts were. And some of them are maybe a page long. Some of them might be a sentence or a paragraph, but they're powerful. It's like what her thoughts were at that given moment. And I included them in this book. And I put her on the cover of the book as being a title, as being an author, mm -hmm. because to me, this is our last venture that we can actually, we're sharing this. From here on out, it's it's whatever I put together, whatever I write, if, if I even write another book. But this one is the two of us, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, I seen the cover last week. They're starting to put the cover together now. So within the next couple of weeks, it should be in print, and then it'll come out. And I'm, I'm looking forward to people to see it. Uh, she had a lot of friends that I know follow my writings and she's got a sister, you know, brothers, our kids, and I, I've got in-laws and for them to be able to hold the last few writings that, or thoughts that she might've had, I think it's going to be a powerful thing. At what point in writing this book, did you have the idea to include that when you found the writings or was it something that kind of developed over time? No, I think in the course of writing the first book, because I mentioned, I mentioned okay. it in there that at some point I wanted to do this. Yeah. And now to have that opportunity, it's been a, been an exciting journey for me. And, and it's still hard when I sat down to edit and I come across one of her writings or even one of mine, it, it kind of stops me in my tracks. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm reading her words. And when you're reading her words, you hear her voice, how she speaks, the yep. little pauses, the little quirks that we all have around our voices, and yep. you can you can hear hear her say the words. Yep, right? and you know you see their expressions. You know you you yeah. know someone well enough. You know how they how they talk and how they carry themselves. And each yeah. each time, I think for the people that knew her, that that's going to be a really powerful part of this book. And I'm I'm looking forward to sharing it with them. I think it'll be a great thing. What is the timeline on the new book? As as far as being available, you mean? Like release dates, yeah. Um, yeah. I just finished up the la the final edit last Friday. And the cover they started on Thursday, so I'm thinking within the next two three weeks it should be released. Wow. So, yeah, and that that will be available through ten different outfits. I know the the main one will be Amazon, 
Yeah. And then it'll also be available in uh, e e format, paperback, hardcover. And then at some point, I'd like to take and put it onto where if you're driving down the road and you want to listen to it, you can just listen to it as you're driving. Nice. You know, I think that's it seemed to me like a lot more people are doing that now, where maybe they don't yeah. have the time to sit and read a book, but a lot of people are driving and listening to them. So I think that would be a, a great way to get it out there some more as well. Yeah, or there, there's vision issues where they can't read yes. or for whatever reason, right? So yeah. that's amazing. Would you do that as well for your first book? I think so. I, you know, I think yeah. I think that's something I'd like to do. And then with this book as well, the I believe there's 21 uh, images in the book. They're all black and white, but I prefer that over the color because it looks real. And a lot of them, when I seen the image, that's what generated the story. So I wrote the story around what this image was. I didn't go searching for the image. I happened to be thumbing through Facebook or something, and all, all of a sudden an image shows up, and I have a story for it right then. <laughs> uh, one day I was out in the garage, and I actually, you always hear people talk about watching paint dry. Well, that's exactly what I was doing. I had paint. I, I had painted something, and I had to wait for it to dry. So I sat down on a stack of lumber, and I'm going through Facebook, just killing time. And I seen an image pop up, and when that image popped up, sort of the story. So I had to contact the person and ask them, could I use their picture for my story? Well, I got the okay to do it, and after that, they've given me okay. I, I've written a lot of stories to their images, and I do that with many people on there now. Is if if there's an image that pops up and it clicks. Then, then I'm writing for it, and I well, and I, I enjoy that. I, there's a what kind of what kind of feedback do you get though from them, Mike, when they read the story that goes with their image? I, it's pretty good. They like it, and they're surprised. Yeah. I had uh, one individual. I I wrote one, and it's in this book. They a person read the story, and they assumed someone else had written it, and I didn't say anything. I just let it go. It wasn't didn't matter to me one way or the other, but that individual told them that no, they didn't write it. I had written and they, they couldn't believe it. That fellow has been writing since he was 16 years old and he's 70 plus. <laughs> you know, and some, some of them are on, on the edge of kind of a sci-fi thing, but as you're reading along, it just reads nice and easy. And all of a sudden it, the punch is there and you have no choice, but to get it because it's right at the tail end is where you find out what you've been reading all along maybe isn't what you thought. Mm -hmm. And and I enjoy doing that. But it's all comes from seeing these pictures. And so when they when they read through this book, there's gonna be a lot of surprises like that. Have you always been a, a very visual person that you talk about the sun coming up in the morning no. and being aware of everything around you? Never. No? No, never have. really no, nope. I was one to just get up, go to work, come home, do what I needed to around the house, spend time with family and do it the next day over and over. It all came about with my wife at her at the end of her life, and it, it's it's opened up a whole new world for me, uh, a whole new layer of friends, you know, really good friends, opportunities. I mean, I, that's how I've met you. Yeah, you know, I would have never met you or known yeah. who you were, and I mean, right. it, it's just unbelievable to me all all the opportunities that come with this, and it's so. It's like a treat that I don't have to do anything. I just sit back and take it in. <laughs> so, Mike, what is the what is the what's the secret to this? How can we be? How can we, as listeners, as authors, as readers, how can we be more engaged the way you are? It feels like when you talk about just going to work, doing the thing, it feels like I drive. I drive a manual transmission. In my yeah. car it feels like you're out of gear. You're just coasting. Your yeah. your clutch is engaged, and you're not really going anywhere but you're just just doing life yeah. now i feel like you're more like the clutch is engaged you're in the right gear and everything is just different yeah. how do we how do we become more engaged like that what do you think it took me a long time to get there i think i think in the, uh i talk about it in the preface i might have been 57 56 i had coasted all those years i mean i, I wasn't lazy I lived life and we did a lot of things, but it wasn't the same as it is now. But when my wife took ill, it got to a point where doctors didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. 
than when I asked God to give her my years if I had any left. Mm. That hit me. And at that moment, all of the stories of my youth came back. And I I knew what I had to do, you know. <clears throat> and I rededicated my life to the Lord. And with that, I got a peace that I've never felt before. And with that peace came all of this that I now enjoy. You know, and it's it's been fantastic. I wouldn't trade a minute of it. I mean, I don't I don't wish that anybody would get sick or die. Yeah. But the outcome of that was I was made vulnerable to where I listened and everything started making sense. Everything looked beautiful. You know, I I could hear the birds, you know, and I I, I could probably always hear the birds, but it just never, it, it, it never clicked. Now things click. You know, I, I get up in the morning, I read a daily devotional, I read my Bible, I say my prayers, I have my coffee, my, my greens, <laughs> and I go yeah. out and it's whatever the day throws at me, I just take it. You know, and I, yeah. I, I give it everything I got and I come in at night and some nights I'm dog tired. But it's been a great day, you know, and I, I love it. I wouldn't change it for a bit for, for anything. But it, I think it all stems from finally recognizing that there was nothing I could do on my own. I had to trust God. And when I started trusting him, everything started opening up. Here, here Here's a piece, and I don't know, you might want to edit this out even. <laughs> but when I pull out onto a main road, whether I'm in Grand Rapids, Montana, Ottawa, Toronto makes no difference. When I come to an inner a stop and I have to pull out into traffic, I've been in four lane, six lane, eight lane. The road is open. There's not a car in sight that would hinder me from pulling out. That has happened ever since passing of my wife. Mm. I I'm amazed every time I I you know you you're in a busy and you're you're hurrying to get around. It's like oh man, look at all this traffic. And when I get ready to pull out. I got an entire road bare. There's not a, it's like when I travel down the highway, it's like I'm in a bubble and I mm -hmm. see cars passing by, but none of them ever stay in that bubble where I'm at. They either pass by me or they stay behind me. And that's like, I, I got my own space. You know, I'm, I'm being taken care of all the time. And it's like the old saying, a kept man or a kept woman. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's kind yeah. of that same thing, but, but I know it's God and it just, Life is easy, you know. It's like I don't have to fight anymore, you know. When you're kind of sounds like somebody's directing traffic for you. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's exactly how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how it feels. It's like somebody's directing traffic, and I'm given all the, you know, I'm given all the right directions at the right time, and it's meaning that they can see for things you can't see down the road. They yeah. are kind of. Yep. orchestrating things for you. Yep, it's, yeah, exactly. You know, they, he can see the big picture, yeah. and we can't. And by just trusting in what he can see and know, knows, there's no stress. You know, I mean, it, when I was coasting through life, like you're talking about, you know, just you get in the habit, it's mundane, you just do it over and over and over. There's stress, even though it's mundane. Now yeah. I'm busier than I ever was, but I don't have the stress. You know, it's just, it's, it's enjoyable. You know, like the, I guess telling you earlier, there this morning to go out and in an hour and a half move five yards of dirt. Yeah. No big deal. Just something I did. <laughs> Amazing. And, and, and it's fun. You know, I, I wasn't yeah. upset because you're getting the sweat going or anything. It, I enjoy it. You know, yeah. it's like life is just take, taking on a whole new, a whole new appearance. Yeah. And it's like, all I want to do is share it. And sometimes that's hard for me to figure out how to do, but if I can do it through a writing or a post every now and then, I'm, I'm good with that. That's a start. You know, I'll just keep picking away at it. It's amazing. Um, I, when you say this might be your last book, possibly, we don't know. I hope it's not because I think there's a lot that, you can share and you're learning stuff every day. Yeah. So I would love to encourage you to keep writing in that format as well. Yeah. I know you do your posts on social, which I really, really enjoy, but there's just something special that you have 
Mike, you see the world in a new way that many of us don't. And maybe many, many of us are caught in that little hamster wheel of just mm -hmm. doing life and not being aware of our surroundings, not realizing that we have this bubble around us. Mm -hmm. You might not even recognize that, but you see it. So you telling us and sharing your thoughts it's, helps us to go, wait a minute, I'm, that's happening to me too. And it is, it's, it's a great thing. And it, you know, like I say, it, it's not like I've always been there because I never was. I was like everybody else. You know, yeah. I was in that hamster wheel going as for all I could go, but I was going nowhere. And, yeah. and now I don't even think about going anywhere. <laughs> and I'm going all the time. <laughs> I love it. Life is good. It's exciting. It's exciting. I, yeah. I've got a shirt that a, a good friend of mine, his favorite saying is living and loving life. And I took and had it put on the back of a t-shirt for me. So in big letters, is living and loving life. And I, I wear that where I go and it's like, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Um, Mike, so as far as um, people listening, they want to reach out to you, they want to follow these amazing posts that you do on social media, be in touch and all that. Where where do we go? What do we do? Uh, social media is ML Sutton. And my email is pearlruby9742 at gmail.com. Okay. And that's where they can most often find me. And when they when they go on the social media, there's actually three sites that they can follow. Like I say, the Writers Cafe, Dirt Road Storytellers, and Biz Catalyst 360. Those are not only will they have a chance to follow my writings, but they can see other people's writings, and they they may want to comment on something they see there. You know, yeah, it's it's a it's an entire life outside of the life that many of us know from day to day. And it's, it's a good life. Excellent. Um, Mike, uh, again, every time I see you on my screen, like I said, it's always uh, inspirational and you motivate me to think about stuff as well. So I hope this isn't the end of our conversation. We get mm -hmm. to talk many, many more times in the future. But thank you for taking this platform that's been kind of handed to you in probably some of the worst circumstances and then using that platform to reach out into the world and, and encourage people who don't even know yet that they need what you have to offer, but they will, there'll be a day where they'll be like, yeah, I needed that. So. Yep. And if they, if they remember that even, you know, if they happen to think yeah. like, you know what, I've, I've heard someone else who dealt with this or who did this and I, I can, I can beat this, you know, then it's, that's worth it. You know, just, I look at it as if you can help one person at a time. There's a great big world out there. As long as I'm living, I figure God's got more for me to do. And so I get up each day as soon as my eyes awake, you know, open up. I don't even think about being on the top side of the dirt. I I know as soon as my eyes see daylight, I got another day. You know, I'm 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 going. <laughs> I got a lot to do. <laughs> it's amazing. Everyone, go check out all the information in the show notes for Mike and. Um, if you have an opportunity to do so, please leave him comments on the posts on social media to encourage and inspire him as well. As he gives to us, we can also give back to our authors and those that provide great content to us on a regular basis. Make sure you leave a comment and uh, let him know you're thinking about him as he continues to provide for us. Mike, thank you again for making time for me. You can now release the cat from the bedroom and uh, get on with your day back out to some, some work outside as well. Thank you for making time for me again. It's so great. Uh, to have hey, I appreciate it. I enjoy talking with you. One of these times I'm going to get over that way and we'll find you. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Yeah. I would love that. That would be great. Well, thank you, Dave. Uh, everyone. Yeah. Everyone go check out the show notes. And again, please reach out and give Mike some uh, some love and appreciation for what he does. Thank you so much, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for checking out this episode of Living the Next Chapter. Did you know that we have more episodes than we can release? So, 
If you want to get the most recent episode of Living the Next Chapter, and you want to jump the line, head over to our YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe, follow, ring the bell, whatever you need to do over there on YouTube, and you will get the most recent episodes of Living the Next Chapter way in advance of everyone else. Get the most recent episode of Living the Next Chapter right now. You can hear the episodes we recorded today, yesterday, right now on Living the Next Chapter's YouTube channel. I'd love to see you over there. Please share, tell the world, and we'll see you on our YouTube channel and check out the amazing authors coming up on Living the Next Chapter. Thanks for your support.